While doing an experiment with foam generation during pressurization, we came across an interesting issue. We started pressurizing and the foam began forming, so all was good for launch when we reached the target pressure of 120 psi. The launch proceeded as normal with a good launch and a good recovery, but it didn't look like there was much of a foam trail after burnout. It wasn't until we looked at the pad cam video that we saw there was a virtually no foam left when the rocket launched. It is armed, okay. Ultimate is on. Ultimate is on. Okay, start pressurizing, please. In the video, you can see that the foam forms initially, but after a while, instead of increasing, it actually started collapsing. This normally doesn't happen, so we were a little surprised. Eventually we tracked it down to the silicon grease that we normally use on our O-rings. We had used quite a bit of it on the day on the launch tube as well as the nozzle. So we did a little experiment to see what effect silicon has on foam inside the bottle. So here we have a couple of bottles with uh, about half a litre of regular tap water in, in each. And we're going to add 6 ml of uh, bubble bath solution to each of these. And we'll shake them up. Even after three minutes, the foam is still holding. Now we're going to use some of this silicon based release compound that we use on our O-rings and our water rockets and put it, smear it inside one of these bottles. And we'll repeat the shake up of the experiment. One thing that this experiment does not show is added pressure and heat, both of which help collapse the foam faster. So there you go. If you want to retain most of the foam in your rocket, use only limited amounts of silicon grease where necessary. A quick search of the interwebs revealed that silicon is often used as a defoaming agent.